Hello guys, it's Wednesday morning and today we've got a move from Guernsey to the UK so we've got a great episode for you. Um, you can see our process, um, how we pack kitchens and how we pack pictures, things like that. All things moving from Guernsey to the UK, so stay tuned. Hello guys, so today we've got to move from Guernsey to the UK, so I'm going to show you exactly how that process works. We've got a bit of packing to do here, packing some kitchens, I'm going to show you how to pack fragile boxes, uh, we've got to do an inventory, load everything onto the van, take it to the harbour and then put everything onto a container before that container gets shipped to the UK. So as you can see guys, we've got a full kitchen to pack up. Okay, so we've got um, all the packing materials, we've got some glassware, some topperware, baking trays, all sorts, okay? So, yeah, what we're going to start with, we're going to start packing some glasses. So we're going to use the medium boxes, and um, these are usually good for packing paperwork, books, CDs, DVDs, heavy items, tin food and bottles. The reason why is because they're smaller than our general boxes. And, but what I do, I use them for fragile glassware as well, because that way they're so light, then we put them on the top of the load so nothing gets stacked onto them. So all the fragile glasses are safe. So, and this is our white paper. We find a flat surface to put it on, and then we can start wrapping the glassware. And what I do as well, we've got this crunch paper here, which is just basically paper from a previous move. But the reason we keep that because then we use that as a layer at the bottom of our boxes for fragile because at the moment obviously we've just got the box so what we want to do is we want to get a bit of that and just create a bed put that in there. and then what that does now that's just creating a bed um, for all the fragiles So all of these glasses are going into the box standing up. The reason for that is because standing up is the strongest point. If you put pressure on the top, it's less likely to break as opposed to being on its side. So it's the same with plates, just like glasses, you pack them into a box standing up like that because again that is their strongest point if any pressure is being put on it so with plates we can sort of layer them up and pack them tightly sideways. So we've already put a bed of crushed paper onto the bottom so it's nicely protected. When you're packing the plates it's important to not put all of your plates into one box because one, when you do that they're really really heavy and you know the heavier the boxes the more chance there is that people are going to put them down roughly they may even drop them. So in a nutshell, the heavier the box, the more chance of damage. So you always want to spread your plates out over maybe two or three boxes mixed with some other light items.
things like these, bacon trays, they just treat them the same as plates. Wrap them up and stack them on their side. Same again. You want to pack things as tightly as possible because you don't want things moving around in the load whilst it's in transit. So once everything's wrapped, the glasses are standing up, the plates are on their sides. Okay, so that's one layer and then we're just gonna get our cross paper and put another bed over the top and then we're gonna wrap items to the top before sealing. Okay, so as you can see, we put some lighter items on the top. Um, we've left a little gap on the top there because what we're gonna do, we're gonna put our final layer of cross paper on the top. Just get one of them. Just gonna put that in there and then we're gonna seal the box. Now, it's really important to make sure that the boxes are full. Not necessarily heavy, but as long as they're full. I'm just gonna seal this and I'm gonna show you the reason why. Okay, so the box is sealed now. Um, I've sealed it once across and on the side so nothing can get in there. And like I say, it's important to fill the boxes up to the top um, because, and, and you can still feel a little bit of a sponge there because when we stack it in a vehicle, obviously there's gonna be boxes on top of these. So it's important that they're full so they don't crush within the load because all that happens when you end up at the new place, you just end up with a load of crushed boxes. Um, and it's not necessarily for any support with stacking or anything like that, or that anything's going on here. It's just literally because the boxes weren't full up to the top. So all I'm gonna do now is just mark the top, because it's very important to put the, your name. The most important one is probably the room name. So I'm gonna tick kitchen there, put the contents, which in this case was glassware, and a bit of china. And then that's it. Yeah, I haven't put the owner's name, obviously, for the video, but the reason why the room name is so important is because when we get to the new house, the movers are gonna be pretty much self-sufficient once they know the rooms. So if you're the customer, you're literally going in and saying, well, obviously this is the kitchen, this is the lounge, this is my main bedroom, this is bedroom two. Um, as long as these boxes are labeled then, the movers are self-sufficient and they'll just put everything in the correct rooms for you. Here we go again, look, so packed a layer. Let me show you, get the camera there. So I packed a layer there. Again, you can see nothing can move, everything's solid. So I'm just gonna put a layer of crush on the top and then put some light items there to fill the box up. So just like all, with all things moving, you know, packing's no different. Although you may want to do one cupboard at a time, pack one cupboard and then finish and then do another one and get closure on it, actually it's a bit like a jigsaw puzzle, it's a bit like Tetris, so you end up taking things from different cupboards to get things into the boxes and make best use of the space. It's the same with loading really, you know, people always ask us, are you going to take all the, all the boxes first? You can't actually do that because... Whilst it may, your stacker may look good for a, a second with all the boxes there, but then you end up with loads of furniture that you can't stack and it just ends up taking longer um, and you, you can't, it just makes life hard. Yeah, so when we're stacking a vehicle, we always go for like a chest of drawers as a, some base, then we go boxes, then we find some top load items that are very, very light and are not gonna damage anything and then we just build the next tier and we go back like that. Packing is similar. Similar because you put the heavy items at the bottom and then you build a base and then put light items at the top. So stacking's like base, boxes, top load, whereas packing is base, top load. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so we've got the kitchen packed now. Um, the customer here, they've actually moved to the UK already, so they're not actually living here. So this kitchen is um, half full, 
to be honest with you. And um, the average kitchen takes around 15 to 20 boxes to pack. Now this one has taken one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So ten boxes straight away. Um, I only bring that up because when I go and look at moves, quite often people will tell me, oh, we only need five boxes in it here. And they're actually shocked when I usually tell them it's about 20 to 25. But just to give you an idea, like I say, no one's living here. It's half empty and it's taken me 10 boxes to pack the kitchen. So now everything's packed. Now we've got to do an inventory for customs because there's these goods are going to the UK. They need to pass through customs and we'll show you how that works. Okay guys, so as you can see, we've got some pictures here. Now we're not just gonna ship them to the UK like that and just put a blanket on them. What we're gonna do, we're gonna wrap and seal them in bubble wrap. So I'm gonna do that very quickly for you. That's all the pictures wrapped and sealed now. Um, I just wanted to show this bubble wrap because as you can see, it's not your normal bubble wrap that you could get from like your local B&Q store or something. It's specifically made for the moving industry. So yeah, it's great bubble wrap that. So basically it's got like a layer, of a layer of plastic on the outside, bubble wrap, and then a layer again over the inner side. So it makes just cutting like really easy and it means you can wrap up pictures like that and we, we use it for everything so if we're <clears throat> for instance if we were doing a move to say america or something we would wrap that chest of drawers basically like that in in the uh, bubble wrap so it's just like big christmas presents so we wrap absolutely everything like that but for the uk i mean we're only moving selected items on this move so out of here it's just the pictures so they're all wrapped up and ready to go. Okay guys, so we're down the container now. These are the containers that we use to ship to the UK. They're all airtight, they've got tie bars and gates to tie things off and they're purposely made for removals, okay? So we're gonna load it up and we're gonna tie it off. I'll put a time-lapse video on so you can see the loading. Okay guys, so everything's in the container now, like you just saw in the time-lapse video. So we've secured everything and what happens now is that container gets shipped to pull and then that container gets lifted onto a big vehicle and then it is driven to the property. So those goods never actually come out of that container until they reach their destination. In this case, um, the goods are going to Lancashire. So like I say, ship to pull, the container gets lifted from the boat onto a large vehicle 
and then that vehicle drives all the way up to Lancashire and unloads. So there's absolutely no margin for anything going missing or anything getting mixed up because everything is separated and tied off securely. So that's a, that's a good job done. Um, the only other thing what I thought I would mention is you've seen us doing the moving side of moving from Guernsey to the UK. This is our process, but there is some office administration stuff as well, which um, our office would have taken care of. So our customer would have had to fill out a TOR form, which is a transfer of residence um, on the customs website, which is H HMRC website. And that basically just gives them a duty relief on their goods because if they don't fill that form out they have to pay they're liable to pay VAT on the value of their goods and the only other paperwork that accompanies that is the inventory which you saw me before do by hand and we will have a consignment note as well and then that way everything's customs cleared into the UK please subscribe to relocations TV we're going to bring you all things moving and all things Guernsey